All right, we're back with the first grade critical areas. And to continue the conversation, we're gonna talk about properties. In first grade, it is named as a critical area that students know both the commutative and associative property. Now, they don't have to know the names, but they have to understand the concept. So here's just an example of that. You can have kids roll a dice and then write the um, expression down and then write the turnaround fact for that and illustrate it so that they can see what it looks like. So they have to know commutative property and they also have to know associative property. So you want them to be able to do the same thing. They throw the dice, they throw three dice, they write down the dice in three different colors, and then they draw it out so they can see it doesn't matter, that the order doesn't matter, that the total is still the same. So here's, these are just two ideas to teach the commutative and the associative property. The next big idea that kids are supposed to really understand is place value. That's a critical area in first grade. So you want to start them out by doing things where they take two different colors and they write numbers out. And then they have to um, use the carrots to show that 15 is 10 and 5. Actually, they start doing this in kindergarten, or they should start doing this as one of the models in kindergarten. And then they you know, illustrate a 10 and a 5. And then you want kids to start doing games where I usually give them um, double die and they roll the double die. And so I got a four and a two. You might say outside numbers the 10, inside numbers the ones. And then what kids have to do is they have to show that. So they show 42 and then they carried it out. This is 40 and this is two, right? Um, 42 is 40 and two and then sometimes I make kids write the, the uh, word because number writing number words is part of place value but using this this is a simple center that can keep kids practicing remember center should be purposeful practice so writing out rolling and showing it using the double dice or you could use just two um, regular dice and say use a green one and a red one and say the reds are the tens and the green is the ones or vice versa um, but you're playing some kind of game where they're working with place value now the common core specifically says that children will develop discuss and use efficient accurate and generalizable methods to add within 100 and subtract multiples of 10 this is first grade we're talking about first grade right so adding through 100 so you're going to show um, kids things like this and they don't have they have to regroup but only double digit by single digit and they're really regrouping um, using some of those strategies that they learned as part of their um, basic facts. So you show the kids 39 plus 5, they should rely on lucky 9, right? 39 turn it into a 40 plus 4, you get 44. Or say you see 27 plus 7, you use partial sums. You have 7 plus 7, which is 14, and plus 20, right? 20 plus 14 is 34. You want your kids to be able to add like that with those single digit and double digits. Also, you want them to use the number grids. These are number grids that I bought that are just... Um, I love these number grids because they're already um, wipe on, wipe off, um, laminated, and, or you can laminate them, you know, you can get some really cheap laminators on like Amazon.com, and then they do things like you say, okay, I want you to add 46 and 5, they circle 46, and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they say it's 51, or 46 and, tw uh, you know, 46 and 9, they go, they could go 46 and 10 would be 56, and go back 1 would be 55, right? So you want your kids to use number grids um, to start adding those double digit with single digit numbers, okay? And then also one of the critical areas is that kids can compare numbers. So you want them rolling two numbers and then being able to compare with the symbols and drawing it out. So I drew 34 and 30 and then I circled 30, 34 because it's greater than 30. What I would have kids do actually is I would have them write the word so they can begin to associate that word that they can use that language remember precision is the sixth mathematical practice really important that kids use math 
language. We don't want them just to say 34 is bigger than 30. We want them to say it's greater than 30. We want them to use their math words. Okay. Um, here's another example, and this is what I've been talking about. I just took a sheet protector, decorated it with some duct tape, and voila, I had this kind of fancy, engaging wipe on wipe off mat and I can stick things in there and and I'm not using up so much paper but here the kids rolled a number they had to show it in base 10 they had to write the number word and they had to write it in expanded form remember in first grade that they're just working with tens and ones okay all right so place value is huge in first grade there's also these really cool um, place value dice and I got these at Lakeshore, but you just roll, and it tells you how many tens and how many ones. And so they come in different colors, and so this is eight tens and four ones. And then what I would have the kids do is I would have the kids actually draw that out. So they'd have 84, and they'd have 80 plus four, and they would draw out eight tens and four ones, and so it would look like that, okay? Um, so. I like the place value dice. Like I said, I use them a lot just as one of the centers. Um, and then I also have the kids do things because remember we're working with tens and ones. Um, so I'll have them pull a number card. I get these number cards at the 99 cent store and then they have to illustrate the number, right? And they're just building the number, okay? So very simple activity, but building the number. The other thing I have kids do is I have a lot of place value stamps, right? And what I do is I take out, I take out the thousands, I take out the hundreds and the kids are just working with the tens and ones and they roll a number and stamp it out, okay? So place value is a huge, huge standard in first grade and comparing numbers is a, another huge standard in first grade. The next thing that kids are supposed to do is to have a measurement. Measurement is a critical area in first grade and so it's things like how long is the marker and children are supposed to understand um, that if you take something and you build, you measure it by iterating it, right, that that will tell you how long. They're really doing kind of informal measurements still. In, first, in second grade, they really start working with both systems, metric and customary. But in first grade, they're really just looking at this concept of linear measurement and measuring lengths as iterating length units. So you want to do a lot of things with that. Those are mosaics. You could just as well use uh, unifix cubes or snap cubes. But this idea that, you know, that you take an object and you keep repeating it over and over to see how long something is. You just set up a sender where they do different things. They might use paper clips, they might use mosaics, they might use unifix cubes. All right, the fourth and final area is reasoning about attributes uh, and uh, of shapes and composing and decomposing shapes. So you've got to bring out the pattern blocks and you, you know, you play the hexagon game, right? A hexagon can be two trapezoids, right? A hexagon can be um, a, a trapezoid and a rhombus and a triangle. A hexagon could be um, three triangle, four triangles and a rhombus. So lots of different ways to make hexagons. Um, and that's, you know, you want kids composing and decomposing lots of different shapes with the pattern blocks. Really important, it is a critical area in first grade. Geometry, again, remember, is the only domain that is a critical area in every grade. All right.